In this video, I'll be showing you cool 7.31 tech. Do you ever think, what do you do when some asshole on your team refuses to give up a role, and so they go jungle? What do you do in a game like that to make sure that the lane that gets left alone without a support, which is usually the off lane, does not feed? Well, I'll show you something. I'll show you what you can do. On Primal Beast, you can actually 1v2 or 1v3 a lane very easily. You go to this location, obviously there's tons of spots to hide. All you need to do is make sure that you can come out here in front of the tier 2 when the creeps get there. How do you know when the creeps get there? Well, you look at your side, the creeps are roughly mirrored. Once these creeps get to the tier 2 here, then you know that on the other side the creeps are going to be roughly there. So I wait for the creeps here, and then I body block them a little bit, so that way I can stand in them with trample, and then I run with the creep wave. Because of the wind lace, I have exactly as much move speed as the creeps. There you go. You've killed the entire first creep wave. Uh, because you're solo, you're guaranteed level 2. If supports go on you at this point, there's absolutely no way they're killing an 800 HP hero. You grab this second creep wave here, and then you hold alt so you can see the spawn boxes. You walk through the camps. You kind of slow down around here. And then make sure that the range creep is in the easy camp and then your body is in the hard camp. So now what you've done is you make sure that for the next minute, they cannot pull the lane back because there are no jungle camps to work with. When the creeps get to that hill, you make sure to hit them because otherwise they lose vision and then they fuck off and they walk back to the lane and all of this is for nothing. And then you drag the creeps to behind your tier 2, which by the way, now works on both sides. I'll show you how to do this one later because I think it's very important. And now you freely CS creeps. The carry is going to be left over here CSing. And, uh, yeah, you're, you're 1v2ing at this point. So what'll happen to the next creep wave is it's gonna start about right here. Uh, I can go over and I can grab this and I can pull it over here. Hey! Do you ever wish that you could do this? Well, this guy's Herald, so you probably shouldn't. But, I do think, genuinely, that this is something you can pull out in games on Storm and make people rage quit. Uh, I think if you kill the enemy carry, like this guy did, it is an instant win. Does that mean you have to focus the entire game on doing this? No, but I think that you should have this in your repertoire as being able to do it just in case. Okay, so to do this, you need to have an arcane blink and five null talismans. Let's say... Uh, you just tried this on Drow Ranger. You guess that she's over here to the left spawning, and then she spawns all the way to the right. The spawning in Dota actually follows a pattern. Uh, I believe there are like five locations that the, the enemy can spawn. There is a randomness within those locations, but you should be able to 100% zip and know and hit them if you know where their last spawn location is. So it's like this. It goes one, two, three, four, five, left to right. And then once they hit the far right, they go all the way back over here to the left on their next spawn. So let's say you try it on Drow, you zip to the left. You see that when, once you hit the fountain, she actually spawned to the right. Then you know that the next time she dies, she's going to be all the way to the left. If you see that she spawns in the middle, then it means that the next time she's going to be a bit to the right. The way that you do it is you stand at the absolute edge of the fountain. Otherwise, you don't have enough mana to do the whole zip and TP. Uh, you blink out towards the, the location that you're going to go. So you can just blink towards the ancient or you can just like click literally where you want to zip and that's going to work. Uh, and then when you're by the tier two location, that is when you double tap the TP in order to uh, TP back. So I'll show you here. I'm just going to get Draw Ranger killed. Draw Ranger, I saw her spawn right here because I'm in a bot lobby and I literally spawned her. So I know that her next location she's going to spawn is going to be over to the right. So that's where I'm going to zip. So waiting for eight seconds, I'm going to blink towards the right and then zip. And then, like I said, once I get to about the T2 location, I'll double tap my TP. She respawns and then instantly dies. Hello viewer! Did you know that you can solo the Roshan at level 6 with Shadow Shaman? I didn't until I saw T. McLovner tweet about this. Uh, this was also on Reddit, but then I had a gentleman in one of my pubs do it. Uh, I remember one of the Reddit comments was, Sure, this is cool in theory, but can Shadow Shaman actually do it when Roshan levels up? And uh, I wasn't sure, but then I had this Jace.io guy, shoutouts to him in one of my pubs, do it at 26 minutes. Uh, he did it by placing a ward and kiting Roshan like this. And so, yeah, you, you actually can do it uh, super late into the game. And the reason you can do this is because they changed 
the uh, the armor type that Roshan has. You might be thinking, <laughs> Jenkins, surely this is fucking useless because you're never going to be able to kite the Roshan out of the pit like that at 20 plus minutes into the game without being scouted. And my response to that would be, why are you talking like that? And then my second response to that would be, that's where this hero comes in. Venomancer also got the same buffs to the Roshan damage that the uh, Serpent Wards did on Shadow Shaman with the Plague Wards. So you can also solo Roshan on Venomancer. And guess what people were doing before for at least two or three years now? Jungle Venom. Jungle Venom's been a thing. Speed was absolutely right. And now you can come out of the jungle at like five to six minutes where there aren't going to be wards on the Roche pit. Uh, and you can take Roche. Okay, so here we are at six minutes. Uh, I actually jungled, by the way, in this game. So this is not me just cheating and giving myself levels and items. Uh, I actually jungled. I'm sure if you were actually good at jungling on Venno, you could have a lot more, uh, maybe even be like level six by now. Maybe have a full solar crest, but I suck ass. But uh, all you do is this. You put the ward down in front of the pit. You put the plague wards in. You try to keep vision of the, uh, the Roshan. And they just slowly but surely tick him away. Okay, so 7 minutes, around 30 seconds, you can solo Roshan. Like I said, I'm completely trash at Jungle Venno. Uh, I've never really done this as a strategy before. I'm sure people who actually play Jungle Venno can do this much faster than I can. Here's another tech that you've probably seen before if you use the YouTube. But uh, there's something about it that I wanted to demonstrate. And that is, you can do kind of like a super... Tidebringer cleave sort of thing with Abaddon now. Uh, you get a Battle Fury, you get a Daedalus, you get the Aghanim Shard, which applies an auto attack on the Miscoil, and uh, I've seen Watson from Hellraisers, who is ranked 2 by the way, he's been spamming this in pubs. So this is not just a meme strat, this is legit. Uh, and here's here's the cleave. So if I spawn a bunch of PL Illusions, uh, and then I group them up, like right in front of this thing, and then I use the Miscoil right in the middle, you can see that this thing took 6,750 total damage. That's insane. Uh, obviously, this requires people to group up. This requires a creep wave. Uh, this requires maybe a Meepo or a PL, some hero like that. But Abaddon, because of this, because every single one of the Miscoils applies that Battle Fury, he's kind of the ultimate AoE hero now, if you can get to level 25. But even before 25, that's why I have the Satanic here. I don't think the build is like you should go like three Battle Furies or something like that. That's griefing. Uh, I think you only need one Battle Fury. This is still a really good build. And then you go for Satanic, Scotty, stuff like that. Really normal carry items. And it's still crazy AoE, but then you're still a carry. Okay, so the next tech that I'm going to show you is probably the most important thing in this video. And one of the most important things as well, just in general, in 7.31 that you can now do. And that is... You can now drag the second creep wave on the dire side. Grab the creep wave. It doesn't aggro onto you for a little while. Same thing we looked at in the Primal Beast part of this video. You walk through the camps, block both of them. And then on the dire side, this is what you couldn't do before. So before, you had to go to the, uh, the tier 3, which meant that you would lose two waves instead of just one. And so you can walk this way now if you Quelling Blade that tree right there and there you go it's the exact same thing as what i showed you in the primal beast part uh it's just that you have to quelling blade this tree on the dire side but you literally couldn't do this before these towers were too close together it was impossible so the final trick or the final tech that i want to show you is something that you can do on shen involving these guys because they now have a disarm uh that lasts for three seconds that for some reason works on towers uh so Sir Action Slacks told me about this one first, and he was like, hey, put it in a video. I was like, okay. Uh, and then I saw it on Reddit. So you might already know this, but I thought, fuck it, for anybody that doesn't, I'll throw it in the video. Uh, so what you can do is you get three of these guys, or four. Four makes it easier. But three of them means that this steel weapon, nine-second cooldown, three-second duration, uh, you have 100% uptime on that. Because these guys cannot proc the disarm while something is already disarmed. So if I walk these guys up to the tower here... You can see, uh, eventually when I actually get them in there and they're able to disarm it. There's absolutely no indication that this is happening. But they hit quick enough that 
as soon as the duration wears off, it almost instantly procs again. And so, you can permanently disarm things, including towers, which makes sieging incredibly easy. End of video.